Hello, my name is Peter Raymer. Today we're going to talk about security in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations. Before we look at how to customize security, we want to look at all of the base functionality has to offer in terms of controlling the security within the system. Ultimately, the role-based security allows us to provide access to different users to see different menu items in the system and for other users to not see those same menu items. And then within a given form, um, you may have different access levels to either be able to create data or just view the data or delete the data. Um, so let's look at a high level overview and then we can go into details. Um, first, Within the system, you must have an Azure Active Directory user, and then um, you will use that Azure Active Directory user to set up a record in the user's form in D365. After setting up a user, you will assign one or more roles to your users. Those roles are really just a grouping mechanism that allow us to uh, list all the different menu items in the system and which menu items that your particular user has access. It would be very tedious to manually specify every single menu item and which menu item is assigned to each user and would be very error prone. So instead, um, within the system, we use this kind of structure right here. Uh, this is the Microsoft documentation. So specifically, we have users. Users are assigned security roles. Within those security roles, they can contain duties or privileges. And then duties um, contain privileges themselves. And then privileges give us access um, and permission to the different menu items what within the system and those menu items can point to forms reports um, as well as different operations so well, let's dive in and let's look at an example so specifically you might have a couple different users you might have a system administrator user that needs to have the system administrator role and that role is going to allow them access, full access to all the menu items in the system. You might also have a user that is set up with an accountant role. That role will have a subset um, of menu items that it has access to. So the very first thing that you would need to do to interact with security is to set up a user if you don't already have one created. I'm just gonna drill into this admin user and then we can take a look. So within this admin user, uh, if I were setting this up for the first time, I would need to specify a user ID, a user name, and then the provider. Um, very often the provider will just be this by default, this HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash stswindows.net. Um, but if you're working with um, another domain, you would need to add that onto the end as well. Um, then specify the email of your Azure Active Directory account and then you can specify the default company that you would like to log into when the, this user logs in and you can optionally associate that with a person and then lastly you need to enable the user. After we've created a new, new user, it does not have any access to the system quite yet, other than kind of the basic login capability. We won't be able to see any menu items. So we need to click on the Assign Roles button. When we do that, we're prompted with a dialog that shows us all the different roles within the system. Um, and so we can pick a role by selecting different radio buttons here and then clicking OK, and it will add those roles to our user. But then very quickly, the question becomes, which roles should I add? Which ones do I need to add? For that, I believe you can look at this with two different perspectives. You may have a specific menu item in mind that you want this user to be able to access. Um, 
So let's look at that first, and then we'll look at our second approach. So let's just say I want my user to have access to this customer reason codes form. I believe I found it under accounts receivable, and then under setup, and then customer reason codes. If I want my user to have access to this form, I need to know what roles have access to this form. For that, we can use the security diagnostics tool. If I go up to the options pane and then uh, select security diagnostics, I'm going to get a dialog that's going to show all of the roles, duties, and privileges that allow um, the, a user access to this form. So in this case, I can see that the accountant role and the accounting manager role um, as well as the accounting supervisor role all have access to this form. That's great, but what happens if I want to know what are all the menu items within each role? Um, and that may be really our second option. You may have a particular role in mind. You want to see does uh, a particular menu item exist within this role. Maybe one role has too many menu items and gives my user too much access. So how do we look at that? Um, one tool is you can use this security configuration tool. Um, we'll talk more about this um, in the next article, but this form uh, isn't the best for this because this is really for customizing the different um, roles and security that you have in the system. So instead, um, let's actually look at a report called Security Role Access. If you type into this top search bar, you, you, under System Administration Inquiries Security, there is a form named Security Role Access. And when you run this form, you can actually see all the different objects um, associated with a particular role. I'll go back here to our um, Microsoft documentation and we can look at the different out-of-the-box security reports. There's uh, user role assignments, there's role to user assignments, um, and then specifically this security role access report. Lastly, there's another out-of-the-box report, the security duty assignments, where we can see different duties assigned to each role. This helps maintain a separation of these different duties across roles. So in summary, we looked at um, how to set up security within Microsoft Dynamics 365 for Finance and Operations. We need a user. We need to assign that user role roles have duties and privileges uh, underneath them as building blocks and those privileges have access to menu items which provide access to the rest of the system and so you building up those different groupings of menu items allow us greater control to be able to assign you know groups of menu items based on the processes that you're specifically working on um, to a particular user. We looked at how you can tell what role um, is used by each form. Um, and we looked at um, how we can tell the list of all the menu items for each role. In the next article, we'll go into how do we customize these roles? How do we add um, different menu items to either existing roles or new roles? How do we take our new menu items and add it into the structure. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. If you like the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.